Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. We are a teaching center that focuses on hands-on courses in general dentistry. Today we're going to continue our series on the rubber dam and we're going to discuss some of the armamentaria. Let's take a look at some of the clamps that are available. These are all my basic wingless clamp set and let me go through each one of these. The first one on the far left, this is called a W4, and this would be used for all molars, whether they're maxillary or mandibular. It's the largest of the series. And you notice that the wings are flat. They don't festoon towards the root surface at all. The next size would be the W3, also very effective for molars. And if you wanted to just pick one of the two, I think the W3 would be the one I would choose for all molars. And then I've got a couple of other smaller sizes. The first one here is the W2. The W means wingless. So there are no wings on these. And this is great for premolars or uh, maybe large canines. And then finally, I've got this little W00, which is a wingless double zero. And it's great for anterior teeth. So that's the set of the basic wingless. Now here are the winged clamps. And I've got two here. One is a number zero and one is a number one. And uh, these have wings which help to stabilize the rubber dam from riding up along the side of the tooth. And also some operators uh, choose to place the clamp in the hole and place the clamp and the rubber dam simultaneously. I don't actually like to do it that way. Typically I like to place the clamp first and then place the rubber dam on top of that. Then finally I have here is the 27. This is a winged distal extension access clamp that I would place after the rubber dam is in place. And sometimes it requires you to swap out the distal clamp with this particular clamp, but it's a fantastic clamp and we'll show you how to use that. This is a clamp that I don't use very often. It's an 8A and I don't like, like it because it's very aggressive and the patient will need to be anesthetized on both the facial and lingual side. Uh, if you're doing a maxillary isolation, this requires uh, a lingual injection. So these are rarely used. Of course, you all know by this time that my favorite rubber dam is Nictone. And Nictone has three colors. They make a black, they make a green, and a blue. I just like the black and the blue, personally, because I think they photograph But that's well. just my personal preference. So they're all 6 by 6 inches. They also make a 5 by 5. And they make them in various weights, light weight, medium weight, heavy weight. I like the medium weight. It seems to work well for most procedures. Let's take a look at another little tip I have. And that's to use brushless shave soap. And this is from Barbasol. And I put a little 10cc Monoject syringe so I can dispense this on the underside of the rubber dam when we're replacing it. This is an Ainsworth 5-hole punch. I don't think we need a six hole punch. I like the Ainsworth because it has um, a good design. It's very sturdy and the five holes uh, satisfy virtually all of our needs for punching holes. You want to make sure that the platen, that is that circular area below, is going to be rotated so it goes into a solid click position because if you try to punch when it's not in its proper position, you'll damage the side of the hole and then you'll end up having holes that don't punch very clean. When it comes to forceps, um, this is the Stokes style rubber dam forcep and it's got these little balls on the end like this and I think that it's a decent rubber dam forcep but I need to modify it because those internal corners are going to grab hold of the clamp when we're trying to release it. So I like to make this particular modification so I can get the clamp out easily. The four requirements for a secure and comfortable clamp are four points of contact. You need to place it apical to the height of contour. It needs to have adequate tension. And it needs to have flat wings. The flat wings don't hurt the patient's tissues. And you can see in this particular case where I'm using a W2, it, it satisfy all of those uh, requirements. Let's take a look at a few more clamps and see how they look. And the next one I would use would be this uh, W3 here. And you can see that we insert that on the lingual first, getting 
the lingual to engage, and then rotate towards the facial. And lingual first, rotate towards the facial, make sure we're not pinching the tissue, and that the clamp is apical to the height of contour, four points of contact, adequate tension, and of course it has those flat wings that aren't going to festoon apically, causing a lot of discomfort and potential damage to the tissue. You know, if you're taking a board exam and your rubber dam clamp damages the tissue, that could be a deduction in points, and you want to be very careful about that. Here's a 27 clamp, and we're going to be placing that on the first molar, and you can see how you can piggyback the clamps. Piggybacking the clamps simply means you can put one clamp next to another clamp, and they fit perfectly. Why would you do this? Well, that second clamp will retract the rubber dam further and allow you to gain significant access to the operation field. And then finally I'm going to use this little uh, double zero here and this is a W00. You can use this on premolars, canines, incisors, any of those. I'm going to just go ahead and place it here on the canine to show you how these clamps all satisfy those four demands of a properly placed rubber dam clamp. Thank you very much. Have a great day.